Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you guys how you can recover virtual Wii, iOS files, and channels. You're probably going to want to use this if you might have installed something that you probably shouldn't have on a virtual Wii. Also this guide is great if you want to have a fresh clean installation of your virtual Wii, or you just want to clean it of any iOS files that you don't really use anymore. This guide is also great if your virtual Wii has been bricked because it will restore everything and you won't lose any of your data. I do want to go into the types of bricked virtual Wiis you can get. First one, and I feel like this is the most common from what I've heard at least, is just a black screen. It might also maybe crash if you try to launch certain channels, or you might see a screen something like this. It really depends, but if your virtual Wii isn't working the way it's supposed to, then you're definitely going to want to follow through with this guide. Essentially in this guide we are going to be manipulating the Wii U system update in order to download missing system files. It really depends, but if your virtual Wii isn't working as it's intended to, you probably want to use this guide. Other than that, let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need is custom firmware on your Wii U. In order to get this, I highly recommend checking out Wii U.Guide. That will have the most up-to-date custom firmware that you can get. Also, this is completely optional and you'll definitely probably not need it, but you can always make a NAND backup of your virtual Wii if you're nervous that this program might mess it up even more. The settings I'll be using personally aren't going to completely delete everything, but if you are planning on deleting everything just to have that fresh install, I actually do recommend making a backup of your virtual Wii NAND then. This process is very simple in the Wii U NAND manager. You're just going to need the app, which I'll link in the description below. and over here, you see SLCCMPT. This is your virtual Wii NAND. You're just going to want to click this and click no for like everything else. I would keep OTP and CPROM and then just back that up and it won't take very long. Now, if you're looking to restore a NAND, you can use this application right here called Virtual Wii NAND Restorer. Now over here, it'll just tell you which folder to just create and put it in. And all you just want to do after that is click Restore NAND. Now I'm going to go through the process and how you install all these programs on your Wii U. Simply go to the GitHub page that's in the description for any of the three programs and look at the most recent release on GitHub. After that, download the .zip file for said program. Next you're going to go, on, go into the download of the program. And all you're going to want to do is copy the Wii U folder right here and paste that onto the root of your SD card. Now let's say that the root folder is something different and it's not Wii U. You're just gonna want to go over to apps and make sure the app is over here. After that, I will see you guys over on my Wii U. When your Wii U launches and goes into custom firmware, make sure not to use the homebrew launcher over here if you have it installed. Instead, you're going to want to go to the Mii Maker and launch this instead. The reason for this is actually I was having a ton of trouble trying to launch the virtual Wii Decaffeinator through the homebrew launcher, but using this instead resolves that issue. So click on virtual Wii Decaffeinator and then click load. Now here are all your different options. If you click light mode, this will clear the system menu, Wii message board save data, iOS's, and other titles to install clean versions of them. This will also remove all custom iOS's that you may have installed while modding your virtual Wii. This includes iOS 80 patched and a few others that the guide tells you to install. In aggressive mode, it will pretty much completely annihilate, it will completely just delete everything on your virtual Wii, including save data and channels that you may have installed. Because of this, I highly recommend that you make a backup if you're going to go with aggressive mode. Honestly, I first recommend you do light mode, then going through backing up your save through Save Game Manager GX, which I will definitely make a video on in the future, and then going with aggressive mode if you really want a clean installation of the Wii menu on your Wii U. Force update will basically just make your Wii U to force an update itself. That's what this option does. And here you can look at advanced options. If you feel like you may have deleted one thing that was the culprit and really don't want to go through the process of reinstalling your custom iOS's or anything around those lines, you can just choose it right here. I think these two are your saves and game data, so make sure not to delete these. For the sake of this guide, because I know what I messed up and bricked on my virtual Wii, we're just going to be using light mode. So. 
click on light mode to so restore every essential system title. It really should fix issues unless you did something really stupid with your virtual Wii's NAND. Then click start. And it's going to just go through and just delete everything. So this is deleting all the channels and stuff like that at the moment. Keep in mind this is only going to delete system channels and not any channels I might have installed. Alright, now that it's done, it's going to make you update your Wii U through system settings. Now your Wii U is going to boot into the system settings. However, if you have Tiramisu installed, it is not going to let you update. So, if you have Tiramisu on your Wii U, make sure to restart and follow these steps. First, boot your console while holding X. Then head over to the installer environment. Then click check. Go to boot options. Click switch back to Wii U menu. Click A. Press A. On your gamepad it should say retrieving data for update. So basically it's realizing that the Wii menu is completely gone and it's going to try and repair all the files. After it's done retrieving the data you'll see your Wii U go into the actual update screen. This whole update process should take like around 5 minutes. After the update is complete, make sure to click the OK button on your gamepad. After your Wii U has restarted and you're using Tiramisu, launch health and safety information. After that, navigate to the installer portion. Click check. Click boot options. And click switch to payloader. And then press A. Head back over to the virtual Wii menu on your Wii U to confirm that everything has been installed properly. If you simply did a light install, everything should still be intact. You should still have the homebrew channel if you modded your virtual Wii, so click on that, then click start. You're going to want to head on over to the D2X CIOS installer. Make sure that you have the correct version that's intended for the virtual Wii. I'll make sure to link this in the description if you may have deleted it in the virtual Wii modding process. Click on load. For this make sure that you're using beta 52 virtual Wii and you're going to want to fill up three bases and three slots. Press A to continue. Make sure to install on 57 and 250. Lastly, make sure to install on 58 and 251. After that, exit the program. Then head on over to patched Virtual Wii iOS 80 installer. This process is pretty simple. It's just going to patch the iOS for you. By the way, keep in mind if this crashes in the middle of the install, you're going to have to start the process all over again, so make sure that your Wii U is connected to a power source and to keep everything plugged in. The installation process is pretty simple though. After that you can exit. Now head on over to Wii Mod Lite. This step is completely optional, but if you had Reconnect24 services and you want them to work properly, you're going to want to make sure that you reinstall iOS 31, specifically made for the Wii U. You can get this file if you look up Reconnect24 and follow their guide on there. Just to show you guys as proof, all of my saves were remained intact, so this is completely safe to do if you use light mode. You're definitely going to want to back up your Mies if you do a completely fresh reinstallation. I'll show that off in just a bit. Alright, so this step is completely optional, but I'm going to show you guys how to get your theme back if you had one, your Wii channel arrangement, and also where to go if you want to back up your Mies before doing a completely fresh installation. So the virtual Wii's data is stored right here, so click on it. For Mies, you're going to want to go to Share 2, Menu, Facelib, and this file right here is going to be all your Mii data, so make sure to back this up. And it will also have your data for specific games such as Wii Sports or Wii Play. This will still remain linked to your save file if you back up your save file as well. In order to restore your theme and your Wii channel arrangement, go to title, the one with a bunch of zeros and a two at the end. Go over to data. Replace the IPL save.bin with the one that you had backed up. Click yes. 
head on back and then go to content. I'm just going to rename this real quick. Then replace this file, click yes. This is my dark theme that I had for my virtual Wii. And as you guys can see, I got my dark theme back and also my disc channel in the place where I want it. If you guys watch my virtual Wii menu tour video, this should look very familiar. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and it helped restore your virtual Wii menu or fresh install it. If you guys want to support me, make sure you follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash datazemnus. I stream on there at 7pm EST from Thursdays to Sundays. I do a whole bunch of stuff on there, but mostly Nintendo games and Kingdom Hearts related content. I also bought the domain zemnus.org so you can always head on over there if you also want to be redirected to my Twitch channel. Make sure to drop a like if it was helpful for you and also make sure to subscribe as I hope to be a lot more consistent in YouTube uploading and want to make more Nintendo modding videos in the future. As always, make sure to leave a comment if you had any questions related to the guide, but other than that, Thank you guys for all your continued support as always, I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys all later.